Hey, what's up, everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing the what's next on Jose Ramirez, the former unified junior welterweight champion at 140 pounds, uh, coming off of his return uh, decision victory over former two-division champ Rancis Bartholemy. Now, before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So Ramirez returned on April 27th. It was his first fight in, I think, 14 months. He took on Rancis Bartholemy and got, excuse me, got a, um, a deserving 12-round decision. He did have a couple moments where he got stunned uh, with a left hand by Bartholemy, so it definitely was a, um, a tough battle. Um, you know, uh, Bartholemy was definitely competitive in the fight. It was a good action-packed fight, but Ramirez would end up winning out and becoming, or, and, you know, getting back in the mix here at 140. So now the big question is, what's next for Jose Ramirez following that, um, following that performance? And um, we really don't know exactly what's going to happen, but one thing I can tell you is I firmly believe that he is, um, that he's in the, um, I firmly believe that he is in the mix for a um, Ryan Garcia fight. Um, I think he definitely, uh, he could potentially move up um, to 147 to fight Ryan Garcia. I personally believe that's the only fight he's gonna move up for though. Right now his highest ranking is number four in the WBO. He dropped a couple spots. I think the inactivity kind of hurt him. But um, a couple of the guys that are ahead of him, we know Arnold Barbosa is number one, but the, a couple of the other guys that are ahead of him are Richardson Hitchens, who's the number one contender in the IBF right now. He's already won that mandatory spot. And then Sandor Martin, he's the number one contender in the WBC and has actually been ordered by the WBC to fight Devin Haney next. So um, I really think he's right there in the mix. So let's take a run through the top guys, you know, in the division and see what possibly could be next for Jose Ramirez uh, moving forward. Now, um, we look at the number one, you know, undefeated, well, not undefeated anymore, but could be reverted back to undefeated, WBC champion Devin Haney. It's not a hard fight to make, but it looks like Haney is gonna have to make a mandatory defense of his belt next against, um, against uh, what's his name? Um, Shit, why am I drawing a blank? Against the former, uh, I'm sorry, against Sandor Martin. Sorry about that. It looks like that's what's going to be next for Devin Haney. So I don't think Ramirez and Haney are going to get together for this fight. We'll see, though. We know Haney's got some pull, but I think the WBC is going to enforce the mandatory on Devin Haney in the next fight. Then you got number two, T well, then you got Tiafimo Lopez, the reigning WBO champion. Um... It really depends on what Lopez wants to do next. I think the WBO has granted him another um, uh, fight, uh, optional defense before facing off against his mandatory, which is Arnold Barbosa, is his number one contender. But, you know, I I'm, a, I'm a little surprised the WBO has an order. I'm a little surprised Tiafimo doesn't want to go after um, Arnold Barbosa. So, you know, and get his mandatory out of the way, especially stylistically, it's a good matchup and Barbosa doesn't have a lot of power, but Tiafimo, it's, it's interesting. I also think right now he might be doing the Ryan Garcia dance as well because, um, you know, both have expressed interest, but now we got to see what happens with the Ryan Garcia uh, PED scandal situation um, with Devin Haney. You know, we know Ryan says he's not fighting um, at 140 anymore. So, um, Tiafimo has already said he would move up. So, uh, Tiafimo, I think, is going to is gonna check in on that major fight and then make a decision on what he's going to do. And I really don't think Jose Ramirez is part of that plan for him. So, I think it's a long shot. I think it could happen, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, then a rematch with Josh Taylor for Jose Ramirez. I just don't think it's a fight Taylor would be interested in. Taylor defeated Ramirez to become undisputed champion. I don't think there's any doubt that he won that fight clearly. Um, and 
the Ramirez doesn't hold the title for Taylor to want to take. So I don't think Taylor, after if he defeats Jack Catterall on the 25th, I just don't think he's going to be interested in a in a showdown, a rematch with Jose Ramirez. So I'm going to say no. Then you got Jack Catterall, and this one's interesting. Both of these guys are ranked um, kind of high in the WBC and the WBO. So what Catterall, um, if he defeats Josh Taylor and cannot get a major fight, would he and Ramirez be interested in locking horns? Would Ramirez be interested in that? He might. And it's an easy fight to make with Catterall with uh, Matchroom and the zone and Ramirez with Golden Boy and the zone. So I'm leaning towards the less likely that the fight would happen, but I do think it could draw some interest from both sides because it's not a hard fight to make and it would be on the zone. Then you got Sandor Martin. Not sure Ramirez would be interested in the fight. It, it, it's an easy fight to make, but I'm not sure he'd be 100% interested. But if he was, um, again, not a tough fight to make, but it looks like Martin is going to get the crack at Devin Haney next, so I don't think this one is going to happen. Not next, anyways. Then you got Regis Progray, the former two-time champion. This was a fight that was supposed to happen and never did. Um, would both sides come together? I think Ramirez would look at Progray now as a more beatable option. So he might go for it. Progray might say yes, just because, again, he's with Matchroom and DAZN, and Ramirez is with Golden Boy and DAZN. So it's not a hard fight to make. It'd be a crossroads fight between two former champs trying to get back into the mix. I think it would sell. I really do. So I do think there might be some interest in this fight. Super El Matias, the reigning IBF champion, is next. He um, is fighting Liam Paro, and then I think he's either going to attempt to unify belts against one of the other champs, or he's going to have to make a mandatory against Richardson Hitchens. So I don't see a fight with Ramirez happening. Not next anyways, but I but I am intrigued by that matchup. I think it'd be a good one. Then you got Arnold Barbosa Jr. Um, if the WBO mandates Barbosa to fight somebody, it's probably going to be Ramirez, and they're both with Golden Boy. So I do still think that this one's possible. They might say, hey, we want you guys to fight, maybe even for the interim belt. We want you two guys to fight, slug it out for the mandatory spot at Tia Fimo, and then they would get a Tia Fimo or potentially be upgraded to champ at the beginning of next year because we know Tia Fimo is interested in a Ryan Garcia fight. So we'll see what happens there. Um, number 10, or next, Gary Antoine Russell. Not seeing a fight with Russell take place. It's uh, Golden Boy trying to work with the PBC, and I don't see that one. Uh, plus, it's a bad matchup for Ramirez, so I don't think he should take it. Um, O'Hara oh Davies is another name in the mix. He is a fighter that just signed with Golden Boy and then got knocked out against, um, uh, what was his name? Um, I, I forget the, the guy's name, but he got knocked out against the old man that... Um, uh, Ishmael Barroso. He got knocked out against him in the first round, but he is a golden boy fighter, and they might say, hey, let's throw him back into the mix against Ramirez and get him right back on track, and Davies might want to prove himself a little more, so he might take a fight with Jose Ramirez. I wouldn't completely rule it out, so I do think that one's possible. Um, then there's uh, Richardson Hitchens. Not a hard fight to make, but Hitchens is in line to fight for the IBF title next against uh, Super El Matias, so I don't see this one happening. Kenneth Sims is highly rated in the WBA, but not. Uh, in, uh, but he's also with top rank, so I don't see that one. Ishmael Barroso is the number one contender for the for the um, uh, the WBA title. I think he's got he's biding his time and waiting for that fight. Um, so I don't see Barroso and Ramirez happening unless Barroso really wanted it. Um, Nestor Bravo, not a big time name. I don't see it. Roly Romero coming off that brutal knockout loss to, um, to what's his name? Um, Isaac Cruz. So I'm not seeing that one. So Ryan Garcia, as I said, I do think this is a very possible option for Jose Ramirez. It's probably the one he's, he's going to be floated with the most at first and interested in, but it would mean moving up to welterweight or a catchweight between junior welter and welterweight. So um, I think that, I think Golden Boy is going to look into that one first. And then after that, I do think there's possibilities of Arnold Barbosa
Tulsa, if Tiafimo, uh, if the WBO decides they want to, they want a true mandatory and order a fight between the two, or um, or uh, showdowns with Jack Catterall, Regis Pro Gray, I think makes a lot of sense. So the good thing is, is there's a lot of the zone matchroom Golden Boy fighters, um, you know, but I don't know how big of a fight he can get next. But I also see a potential fight with O'Hara Davies. Um, I do think Ramirez wants to get back into the serious mix now. I think he's going to entertain the idea of Ryan Garcia first and moving up. And if not, I do think possibilities like Catterall, Davies, Pro Gray, um, and uh, Arnold Barbosa are there as well. So we'll see what happens. But that's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on former unified junior welterweight champion of the world, Jose Ramirez, following his uh, competitive de unanimous decision victory over Rancis Bartolemi, the former two division champ. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.